Welcome to our podcast, voted one of the best in the market research industry two years in a row, 2019 and again 2020. This is a Research Business Daily Report, the only daily research news video which for the last 10 years has presented a look Monday through Thursday most weeks at one top story that we think is important to members of the research industry. RBDR relies on viewer support and you can pitch in by contributing. We'll talk to you about that a little bit later. I'm Bob Lederer. In my 26th year as the respected voice in market research. Hey, in those 26 years in this industry, I have to admit I haven't seen a correlation between how great a job a qualitative research moderator can do and their interest and involvement in performing improv. Now, that might be actually to the detriment of young qualitative researchers if you listen to someone we're going to talk about today. Apparently, this person who works in research and engages in improv believes that the basics of performing the latter certainly generates verifiable research benefits, and that someone who has experienced both firsthand is Vivisum Partner Senior Associate Ciara Lutz. In blogging How Improv Made Me a Better Moderator, Lutz wrote, quote, I've been doing improv for less than a year, and I can already see the skills I picked up in my first few classes improving my moderation style. Lutz claims that a handful of improv fundamentals are, quote, immensely helpful in interview moderation. She explained to begin that yes is one of the most important rules of improv. An individual who is part of an improv scenario is a scene partner, and they need to commit to a whatever crazy premise their research partner has in mind, and further, to not just do it, but to justify it. While moderating, the similar concept is known as yes, which translates in moderation to treating every respondent like they are a genius, or at least very simply very interesting, because that encourages the goal of inducing a, res a respondent to open up with their opinions. Next, there's a concept we're all familiar with. It's called the self-fulfilling prophecy. Well, in improv, as well as moderation, treating people as though you expect them to succeed will likely help that to happen. In improv, when a participant expects their scene partner to make good choices, the scene can more likely become more smooth in its moderation, it's key to be genuinely interested in what a respondent has to say and then behaving that way because it makes the respondents comfortable to share an honest opinion or two or three. Long-form improv, performing a continuous 15 to 20 minute scene, is appreciated by improv partners because it permits both performers to more easily discover and emphasize the aspects of a scene that merit being explained further. Lutz asserted that a slowly evolving qualitative interview avoids respondent confusion, but more than that, it takes a focus group session and opens the way for unanticipated, fascinating insights that were never part of the discussion guide. Thanks for these points of view, Ciara. That wraps up today's Research Business Daily Report. As we mentioned at the start of today's video, we hope you'll become an RBDR Patreon supporter, which means that you'll agree to provide a contribution each month, perhaps five to $10 for an individual and maybe $25 or more for a business to help us defray costs and to maintain the excellence of our reporting. If you are watching us today, I have to ask, what can we do to earn that kind of support? Because if you watch RBDR with any regularity or even once in a while, I'd like you to visit our exclusive crowdfunding platform at patreon.com slash RBDR. And once you're there, you can select whatever level of support is comfortable for you. We thank you in advance for whatever you may decide to do. And have a right good research day, and we'll welcome you back here with us tomorrow. And when you do come back, please be staying safe. Take care.